Howdy, howdy, freeze dryers. Welcome back to Live Life Simple. We are covering the fourth video in a series of four. We're covering food storage uh, for freeze dried food. Today we're gonna cover nothing but oxygen absorbers. I'm gonna show you what to look for to make a smart purchase for oxygen absorbers. We're also gonna cover what size oxygen absorber do I need in my Mylar bag. We're also gonna show you what to do with the extra oxygen absorbers after you're done filling your bags to keep them good for your next freeze dry. The last thing we're gonna cover is how to make sure your oxygen absorbers are good before you put them in the Mylar. We're gonna do all that coming up. So there is a lot of information on these little guys out there, but there is also a lot of misconception as well, and we're gonna try and clear a lot of that up today. And in order to do that, I have pulled a bunch of information from some of the biggest manufacturers of oxygen absorbers, as well as food storage companies, and kind of tried to condense it down into this one video. Because if you have been following along in this series, you know that if, your food gets oxygen, then the clock is just ticking and it's a matter of time before your freeze dried food is no longer good. So first let's talk about what an oxygen absorber is and what it does. An oxygen absorber will absorb all of the oxygen in its environment, which in our case is a Mylar bag, or it could be a number 10 can, or it could be a mason jar, but it will absorb all of the oxygen in its environment until it has reached its capacity. It does that all without chemicals. That is why once this is opened, it needs to be sealed into your Mylar bag or a jar or whatever you're sealing this into as quickly as possible because these typically only last about 10 to 15 minutes when exposed to the open air like this, and then they're no longer good. That brings us to our first misconception is that these are poisonous, and these are actually considered generally safe. You can take that with a grain of salt, I don't know, but it is pretty important to think about because this is touching your food, especially if you're going into long-term uh, food storage, it could be touching your food for 25 years or 30 years or even longer than that. And do not confuse an oxygen absorber packet with a silica packet. It is two totally different things. One absorbs moisture, one absorbs oxygen. A silica packet, I personally don't recommend them. I know some other freeze dryers do, but you can do your own research on silica packets. Just don't confuse the two. So why is it important to compare an oxygen absorber to a silica packet? They both do separate functions and one will not do what the other one does. An oxygen absorber is strictly for oxygen. It does not absorb light. It does not absorb moisture. And these are only to be used with fully dried foods or goods. That means that they need to be freeze dried and they need to have zero moisture. The next misconception that many freeze dryers have is that you are going to get a freeze dry bag that looks like this after you add the oxygen absorber. And if someone sees a bag that is not shrunken down or free of air volume like this, they feel that the oxygen absorber is not working. That's actually not true. Most likely to get a shrunken vacuum sealed look like this, you will in fact have to use a vacuum sealer. And the reason behind that is a vacuum sealer will pull out air volume as well as oxygen an oxygen absorber is just pulling out oxygen that has nothing to do with the air volume that's inside this bag. I do recommend before you seal bags like this with an oxygen absorber, try and take as much of that volume out as you can before sealing it, but it's not necessary to have a vacuum sealed look like this for you to get similar results. And oxygen only makes up about 21% of the air volume in this bag. Next, let's talk about how the oxygen absorber works and what size oxygen absorber do you need in your Mylar bag, your mason jar, your number 10 can, etc. Oxygen absorber's magic ingredient is actually iron powder. And when this iron powder is introduced to oxygen, it becomes iron oxide. Through the process of those two things being exposed to each other, it removes all of the oxygen in its environment, whether it be a bag or a jar or whatever you're storing in, uh, until it can no longer remove any oxygen. How do you know how much oxygen an oxygen absorber can remove? Most of the time they are measured in cc's, that is why you see 100, 200, 1000 cc oxygen absorber packets. That is actually how many cc's of oxygen that the packet can remove from an environment before full. 
And that CC amount is not determined by the bag size, it's determined by the bag size with contents full. It also is determined by the type of food you're using. Believe it or not, different types of foods, even though they look to be the same volume, will actually not be the same volume. Some of them hold more oxygen than others. That leads us to the million dollar question, what size oxygen absorber do I need in my freeze dried food? That's not always an easy question to answer. There are several variables. So stay with me. Hopefully we can get to the bottom of this with some charts and with a, a little simple formula and some recommendations. The first variable is the type of food that you're storing. I'm not gonna be able to go over a million different types of foods, but you need to determine how many cc's of oxygen that particular food that you are storing will contain. You can get a pretty good idea by determining the m amount of milliliters is in the container that you're using or the bag that you're using. And lucky for us, milliliters and cc's are the equal amount. So if you can determine the amount of milliliters that you need, then you will know how many cc packet you will need. The most basic and simple way to figure out the cubic centimeter volume or cc volume is to divide the cc or volume amount by five. Since oxygen is approximately 20% of the air inside the storage container or the bag, that we talked about that earlier, around 21%. Another thing to consider is that you cannot overdo the oxygen absorber size. That's right, you cannot over absorb oxygen. And actually the overage can be a huge positive because if for some reason your food storage container or bag gets a small leak. If you have an overage of oxygen absorber size, it can actually maintain that leak for several years in most cases. Another thing to keep in mind that's kind of a refreshing fact is that most oxygen absorbers will actually absorb more than their rated capacity. But I wanna stress, do not rely on that fact, but just as a peace of mind, most 300 cc's are actually rated for more than 300 cc's. So as a general rule of thumb for mylar, quart size mylar or uh, more commonly eight by 12 is usually sufficient with a 300 cc. 300 cc to me is kind of my go-to oxygen absorber size. That is why that's what we sell at freeze drying supplies. If you step up to a gallon size or a 10 by 14, 300 cc is usually sufficient. However, sometimes it will require two depending on the freeze dried food type. So if in doubt, use two. If you're storing in mason jars, uh, the barrier is the glass around the food. It cannot be manipulated. So the safest way to judge the absorber size for a jar is to assume that it were empty of contents, like there was no freeze dried food in there. Uh, here are some quick recommendations for mason jars. A half pint jar, I would recommend a 50 cc, a pint jar, 100 cc, quart jar, 200 cc, and a gallon jar, 800 cc. Again, that is not a bulletproof formula, but as a general recommendation, you can use those. The last thing I want to touch on is the use of a vacuum chamber sealer. To me, it is one step further in just ensuring that your freeze dried food is safe. Not only does it let you know that this, this bag is fully sealed. If it ever becomes not fully sealed and vacuum sealed like this, you know that you have a leak somewhere, but it's removing oxygen as well as air volume. So there is some oxygen in the air volume. So if you double down vacuum seal and use an oxygen absorber, you're really just coming as close as possible to guaranteeing that you are good for long-term food storage. All vacuum sealers are not created equal. I use a vacuum chamber sealer, not a vacuum sealer. There is a big difference to me. This one has a chamber inside of it, which actually pulls a vacuum inside that chamber with the bag and contents all inside the chamber. I use Avid Armor USB 32. If you want a 10% discount on that, just use the promo code Live Life Simple. I don't believe there is anywhere else you can get a 10% discount on these, but this for me is a tried and true product. I've been using it for several years now. Uh, it's a good value for the money in comparison to other brands and uh, I just love it. It's just an additional step. It's just one step closer to ensuring that you have that long-term guaranteed food storage. Next, let's talk about what to do with extra oxygen absorbers that are left over after you've processed and packaged all of your food. You may have a couple stragglers left and uh, 
Obviously, if you leave them out in the open, they're gonna get bad. So what do you do with those? First, I would recommend buying from a manufacturer that will package these in smaller packages. At freeze drying supplies, we specifically use this manufacturer. They tailor to our needs. These are packaged in packages of 10, not 50, not 100. That means you're only gonna have a couple left over usually when you freeze dry your food when you're done packaging. The chances of you having the exact amount of oxygen absorbers for the exact amount of packaging that you're doing are probably slim to none. If you leave these out in the open, they're only good for about 10 to 15 minutes and most will absorb their entire capacity within an hour. The next thing I do to save my oxygen absorbers is take the extras, I put them in a small jelly mason jar as well as the indicator that you find in the package. I put the cap on, then I put this in my chamber vacuum sealer and this will seal the lid as, as long as you have a good sealing lid and these will store until the next time you are ready to package some food. I have done this without a vacuum chamber sealer. You're obviously using some of the uh, absorbability of the packet if you put this into here because you're absorbing the volume that's inside of here, the, uh, the volume of oxygen, it can be done without a vacuum chamber sealer. If you do a vacuum chamber sealer, it works lots better because it will suck that lid down right away and you know that if, you're, if your lid seal is not good, then your oxygen absorbers are not good. That on top of your indicator will be purple instead of pink. We're gonna cover that also in a second. I've also seen people reseal these bags with the extra absorbers. Uh, they just reseal them with the impulse sealer. Uh, I have not had consistent results doing that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. If you're going to try it, I would probably make sure that you have a good thick seal or double and triple seal this. And last, you can also put your extra oxygen absorbers inside a Mylar bag and vacuum seal them that way. I don't really recommend this because you're using a Mylar bag, although they can be used over and over, you're losing at least a portion of it every time you open it. But if you have a large quantity, like 50 or 60 or whatever left over from a large order, then you could put these into long-term storage, I guess, with your oxygen absorbers in here. And you can greatly increase your chances of this working, again, with a vacuum chamber sealer because you are removing all of the contents inside the bag, not just the oxygen, you're removing all of the air volume as well. Last thing I wanna to cover today is how to know whether or not your oxygen absorbers are good. There are a couple different things you can do, starting with looking at your indicator. It's a very simple way that the manufacturers uh, allow you to see whether something is good before it has been opened. This is obviously sealed, it's vacuum sealed, and it has this little pink indicator. Almost all of the manufacturers use this same style indicator. Pink means you're good to go. Purple means you are not good to go. Sometimes you will see ones that have a spot of purple on them or spots of purple on them. Sometimes uh, they are still okay even if they have the spots on them, so keep that in mind when you're purchasing or if you have received an order. You wanna make sure that these are vacuum sealed. There has been no disturbance in the bag. These need to be completely sealed to be good. There are no exceptions for that. Another thing to keep in mind is when the oxygen absorbers are working, they will start to get warm. They will be warm to the touch. You also want them, you wanna make sure that they are pliable like this. Uh, over time, these if these sit in a warehouse or something for a very long time and the seal is broken or they're no longer good, you won't be able to do that anymore. You wanna be able to feel kind of the powder stuff inside. You wanna be able to feel the contents. Always make sure that your oxygen absorbers are good by using those steps and that you have the correct size. If you ever have any questions, don't open the oxygen absorber. Uh, contact the manufacturer to make sure because you, the last thing you wanna do is put a bad oxygen absorber after you've put in all of your hard earned uh, time, money, efforts into freeze drying all this and come out with a bad product years later. I hope today's video answered all of your oxygen absorber questions. That was a lot of information very quickly, but if you uh, found the video helpful, let us know, give us a big old thumbs up. If you have not already subscribed to Live Life Simple, you can do that in the corner down here. Just click the rocking chair and you are all awesome for making it to the end of this video. In the meantime, remember to live life simple. Catch you next week.